Hey guys, Mr. Klein here with our second and last video of our chapter on waves. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the electromagnetic spectrum and all the different types of electromagnetic waves and their uses. So let's go ahead and get started. Ah, Star Wars. Everybody loves Star Wars. Everybody loves a old man with a blaster blowing away a stormtrooper in the ruins of a building while a big ginormous rug comes walking out behind him. Besides, who needs hokey weapons and ancient religions whenever you have a blaster at your side, kid? As the late, great Han Solo would say. Anyway, laser blasters and things like that involve light and, and things of that nature are big parts of science fiction, but our love of them comes from science fact and mainly the electromagnetic spectrum. We're going to talk about electromagnetic waves in this lesson, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Okay. Electromagnetic waves are a different type of wave. In our last lesson, we talked about mechanical waves, which were waves that require a medium or matter for them to pass through. Electromagnetic waves are a bit different. Unlike mechanical waves, electromagnetic waves do not require a medium to travel through. In other words, they can travel through a vacuum. They can travel through empty space, which is really good for us since our main source of energy is the sun, which is in the vacuum of outer space. Now, electromagnetic waves consist of an electrical field and a magnetic field. They're perpendicular to each other, okay? They're at 90 degree angles to each other. And uh, they move in conjunction with each other. And later on, we're going to be talking about electricity and magnetism. We're going to see how they're related. And they're related for this reason, because of electromagnetic waves. Now, all electromagnetic waves, regardless of wavelength or frequency, move at the speed of light in a vacuum, okay? They all move at the exact same speed, and the speed of light in a vacuum is about 300,000 kilometers per second, okay? It's really, really quick. Now, uh, for this section, uh, our normal graphic organizer, we're going to have one that's slightly different. Uh, you don't have to draw this, but this is a diagram of an electromagnetic wave. As you can see, the blue is the magnetic field, okay? See how it's a transverse, transverse wave? And then it's at a right angle to an electric field, which is in the form of a transverse wave moving through. And they both move at the exact same time, and they perfectly balance each other. So this is an electromagnetic wave, and this is we're going to be talking about the electromagnetic spectrum. Speaking of which, let's talk about electromagnetic, the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, we can place them on a graph according to their wavelength, either longest to shortest or shortest to longest. And we call this graph the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, and so it lists all the different types of electromagnetic waves that we know of in the universe. Um, and we're going to look at them in three different groups. The first uh, group is the two slowest types. Now, slowest in terms of longer wavelengths, okay, uh, their frequencies are lower. Their speeds, remember, are exactly the same. Uh, 300,000 kilometers per second in a vacuum. So let's just keep this in mind. Let's go. First one are radio waves. Radio waves have the longest wavelength in the electromagnetic spectrum, about the length of a football field. Doesn't even matter which code of football you like, whether American football, Canadian football, soccer, rugby, union, rugby league, uh, you know, Gaelic football, Australian rules football. I could go on, but I won't. Anyway, about the length of a football field is the length of a radio wave's wavelength. It's used for a whole lot of purposes, especially radio and TV broadcasts. Um, and we use them for communicating because of their long, because their long wavelength makes them useful for not requiring too much energy for them to bring them through because they don't have as much energy as somewhat shorter wavelengths. So let's go ahead and let's complete our graphic organizer. As you can see, you're going to have to pause this and just draw this the best you can. But we want to put at the top, we want to put the type of electromagnetic wave. We want to draw the wavelength uh, the waves link is lengthening as we go. We want an example. They want their frequency in hertz. Okay, remember hertz uh, metric is one wavelength every second. Okay, so 10 to the fourth is about 10,000 10, 000, uh, 10, hertz. Okay, so we put this, and I'm color coding it. So radio waves, you can put it in red. Just lightly shade it. Okay, that way you understand. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna, you can pause the video and draw this and kind of set this up. You might want to draw everything out and then, and then label in those boxes. We go then shade them in. That way it's shaded over. Your choice. Go on. So you can go ahead and pause. And we're back. Okay. So we have this set up. Radio waves. Uh, a version of radio waves that have shorter wavelengths and more energy are called microwaves. 
they have wavelengths, like I said, uh, they have shorter wavelengths and higher frequencies, and they contain more energy, which makes them really useful in heating food. Uh, other uses of radio waves, of course, include um, radar that we use to detect airplanes and speeding cars and things like that, and cell phones. Cell phones use microwaves uh, w uh, in order to communicate with the cell phone tower. And, of course, because it has so much energy, as you can see, the microwaves are penetrating this metal, causing reactions to take place in this CD. Okay, don't try this at home, kids. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on and we're going to go to our graphic organizer. Okay, so we have microwaves. This is the next one we're talking about. You don't have to draw these big uh, blocks around it. I'm just using that for you to use as a reference. So we've talked about radio waves. Microwaves, as you can see, they're getting a little bit shorter. Uh, somewhere between the size of a human and a honeybee, okay, uh, would be the wavelength of a microwave. So there are three different types of light, like what we call the middle three of the electromagnetic spectrum. We generally call them light, okay? They have shorter wavelengths than radio waves, but they're longer than the ones at the other end of the electromagnetic spectrum. They pack a punch in terms of energy, but not as much as the other end. So let's go look at them one at a time. First off is infrared light. Infrared light has longer wavelengths than visible light. Okay? The light that we see with is uh, are electromagnetic waves, which we'll, I'll get into in a second. The term infrared means below red. Infra meaning below red, of course, meaning red. Infrared is commonly called heat waves because much of the heat that radiates from the sun is in the form of infrared light. Okay, besides heaters and things like that, infrared light is used in night vision goggles so people can see clearly on very dark nights. Okay, for instance, you have a Formula One car right here. Okay, we're looking at, we're looking at it through infrared, and the brighter it is, the more heat it has. Okay? So as infrared cameras, night vision goggles, things like that, uh, the uh, earlier night vision goggles, we use infrared in order to see. So we'll look at infrared, okay? That's the yellow part of the electromagnetic spectrum in our drawing. It's about the size of a pinpoint would be an infrared uh, wavelength, okay? So let's talk about visible light. Are there light waves that we can actually see? It's only a very narrow range, really, really small. And despite this, we can see all sorts of colors. In our next chapter, we'll talk about colors. I'll mention colors later in the lesson. But just know that everything we can see is visible light, OK? So all we can see is actually a teeny tiny part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And I'll show you that in the next section. OK, finally, uh, in terms of light, we have ultraviolet light. Uh, that's light that has shorter wavelengths than visible light. The term ultraviolet means above violet, OK? Ultra meaning above, violet meaning violet or purple. Ultraviolet light has way more energy than visible light, and it's useful for killing bacteria in labs uh, and keeping things sanitary. Ultraviolet light can be dangerous because of its high energy. And if you go outside without sun skiing for too long, not only will you get a sunburn, which is actually how you get sunburns, actually not from the light, but ultraviolet light, visible light rather, ultraviolet light gives you sunburn, but your skin can be damaged and even get skin cancer. Okay, now most of the time, whenever we think of ultraviolet light, we think of black light, okay? So we're having chemicals dropped into a tube here, and they're exposed to ultraviolet light, so you get this neon color, okay? So black lights are an example of ultraviolet light. So now we're talking about ultraviolet light. The wavelength of an ultraviolet, uh, ultraviolet ray is only about the size of a molecule. That's really, really small, okay? We've gone from the size of buildings to molecules, okay? We're getting even smaller as we go into our next section. Speaking of light and color and things like that, you might have wondered, how do we get different colors from light? Now, we're going to talk about primary and secondary colors of light and pigments in our next chapter. But light itself, how we see, is actually white. Now, remember that white is the mixture of all colors of light. We'll get into that in the next chapter, but just keep this in mind. But what we perceive as color is actually waves of visible light with different wavelengths, OK? So if we see red light, we're seeing red light. Those are electromagnetic waves with the longest wavelength. Violet has the shortest. And all of the colors we perceive are in between these wavelengths. So they're mixtures of these lights. If we look at, you don't have to draw this. Okay, So this is the electromagnetic spectrum going from long waves all the way to cosmic rays, gamma rays, and stuff like that at the other end. Look how small the band of light is on the entirety of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's super small. And if you notice inside this, you see there's red, green, and blue purple. Okay? That's where that's where the bulk of light colors 
come from in terms of wavelengths. So you have a little bit of yellow, orange is small, there's a little bit of cyan, light blue, and there's a little bit of indigo. But this is the bulk of the bulk of light is really either red or purple with a little bit of green mixed in. Okay, so we're heading down the home stretch of talking about electromagnetic waves on the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, and these are the shortest wavelengths, and we get down to the atomic level or even smaller in terms of wavelengths, okay? We'll talk about X-rays. X-rays are electromagnetic waves that are shorter than ultraviolet light. They have a whole lot of energy, which allows them to pass through less dense objects like skin. But they don't have enough objects to pass through more dense objects like bones. As a result, this makes X-rays really useful for seeing into your body, okay? If you've ever been to the hospital or something or to a dentist and you have problems, they'll usually do an x-ray so they can see the bones without having to cut into tissue or anything like that. X-rays get their name because when they were discovered by William Rintgen in the 1800s, he didn't quite know what they were, so he chose the term x. And x means unknown, which, you know, if you're taking algebra, you know you got to solve for x. x is the unknown quantity, okay? So, you know, x-rays, Wow, way to swallow it there. Okay, x-rays we can use to see inside the body. And this is someone drinking something. So we can actually see the bones. We actually see some of the, the tissue that's more dense that the x-rays can't quite go through. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add x-rays to our electromagnetic spectrum. I have it in indigo or dark blue. Okay, the wavelength of an x-ray is about that of an atom. Okay, and earlier this year we talked about atoms. So we know how small they are. Finally, gamma rays. Gamma rays are electromagnetic waves with the highest frequency and the shortest wavelength. They have so much energy they can pass through skin, bones, and even into concrete, okay? Uh, gamma radiation or gamma rays have the highest frequency. They, know, they pack the most energy. They're often used in radiation treatment where the gamma rays hit cancer cells so hard they actually damage them and kill them. And in fact, whenever we talk about radiation and radiation sickness and nuclear weapons and nuclear energy and risks, stuff like that, the reason why nuclear radiation is so dangerous is because it has a lot of gamma radiation. And that gamma radiation goes at high speeds and it hits the DNA in cells and it breaks them and it causes mutations and stuff like that. So that's how we use radiation to kill cancer cells is we focus gamma radiation and it breaks apart the uh, cancerous cells and it kills them. So finally, we have gamma rays, so that's purple at the end, okay? And their wavelengths about that atomic nu nuclei. So that's your lesson. The electromagnetic spectrum, remember electromagnetic waves have electrical fields and magnetic fields that work perpendicular to each other. And they all travel at the same speeds. And the only difference between them is their wavelength and as a result, their frequency. We have radio waves that are the longest. They shrink down for microwaves. Then we have light, okay, and the three in the middle. Infrared is longer, visible light's a real teeny tiny slice that we can see. Ultraviolet rays, you can't see, get shorter. The most energetic and the shortest wavelength moving are X-rays and finally gamma rays, whose wa uh, wavelengths are only the size of atomic nuclei. So there you go. That's your lesson. That's your chapter. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching. <music>